Okay, for our next code, we're taking a look at Kawaii Five O's code as Ana in Masters on New Queen Street. This game has struggled a bit from the start. We had an Arissa into their doom, but it always felt like he could just walk all over her. I like to think I played decently, but since the tank couldn't make the space we needed, DPS had a hard time following up any sleeps antis I could hit. That'll be an interesting point to check that you were throwing nades and sleeps that could be followed up on in the first place. I hope I can get some feedback here. Yeah, we'll take a look. Um, just on face value, playing Orisa into Doom a lot of the time. Well, we'll look at your team comp. What do we got? We got Kiri, Genji. So we got Nano Blade and Nano Visor opportunities. We have Kiri able to support our DPS on off angles, and then we should be responsible for taking care of our Orisa for the most part. Um. Kiri's going to have to respect their honors anti nades and hopefully deny most of them. Um, probably going to get more value out of that than trying to deny Doom because we have Sleep Dart that can deny Doom as well as um, anti nade and uh, and javelin and stuff like that. Like the the Barissa can peel to an extent without giving up space, but for the most part, what I'm trying to get across is that their team comp is going to play faster than yours. Arissa's great at establishing a front line and living, and part of that is that you should be able to not have to worry about her and deal with the Doom and force him out and then return to her, and she should still be fine, in theory. This is in theory. Um, the only scenario in which that's going to be different is if your Arissa has ult and wants to play super aggressively. Uh, you can go first, or with... Kitsune Rush is the only other times that you're going to be able to act before this team is going to get to act a lot of the time. If this was a Winston, it would be more... Uh, you'd have more of a chance about being able to have just the passive tempo that this team comp has, but because it's a Doomfist, he's going to have much shorter wavelengths of impact rather than uh, Winston, which would be something more like that. Um, he's going to have a bit of follow-up with the Echo, the Soldier may be finding a lot of off angles too. But for the most part, our Soldier should be matching that, especially with the Kiriko support. Um, if their Briggers have a split trying to support their Soldier, then it leaves uh, opportunities for your Genji to go in and, and pressure the Ana. So it's a decent matchup. It's, it's definitely not impossible. Uh, Arisa into Doom is, like I say, it's not exactly the worst thing in the world. Uh, but it can be a little tricky to navigate, especially from the support position. Um, but I think that managed... I think that answered most of that little information. Um, and yeah, we'll look at the sleeps and the anti-nades. Uh, I'll also be interested to look at your positioning and how you position relative to the comp and during the team fight. Being masters, we can be a bit more nuanced with our feedback. So that's what we're going to look for. Careful with that positioning right now, we're very out in the open and could be vulnerable to spam and getting our abilities forced out early. We spam both abilities on the Doom. I'm not a huge fan of this. We need to be selfish. They have a dive, we need to be selfish with one of our cooldowns. Um, Nade is going to find a lot of value looking for Nade opportunities on over-aggressive DPS. Or throwing it on Anna's so she can't walk up with her Doom when her Doom takes space. That's what I think your needs should be going on to. Sleep should be uh, used more to counter an Echo specific dive or a Doom dive. They whenever he uses Power Block. Um, anti Nade could also go onto a Rallying Brig, but for the most part. It's not Nades. Because if you're saying that they're having a hard time following up on nades, then you need to either do nades that are less for follow-up and more about denial of the enemy team taking space, or they may just be mistimed and that your DPS aren't in a position to follow it up, regardless of the space that your tank's creating. Uh, we walk really far out of this fight. I just want to check this. We get max sticky, we get cleansed. I think... Right now I'm, I'm watching your positioning a lot because like we swing really wide on this corner. Like 
we can be hugging this wall to limit the amount of LOS that people have on us, and then jiggle peeking to avoid getting spammed out a lot and keeping our Arisa alive. And I think having Nade up right now instead of having stacked abilities before is probably what costs this Arisa alive. Where am I? F9. Okay. Okay, we dedicated an aid that time. That's good. We still have sleep. I like this. That was a bit... It happens. It happens. I like the quick scope usage. This is good. Again, I just wanted you to look at your positioning as we walk into this fight. Your use of cover, your use of cover, you're really out in the open, it's going to make it really easy for these two to get little chip amounts of damage on you and then him to come out and take advantage of that. Or for him to take the space, you to be in a bad position like this or like here where we're going to be in a second. And then it's going to be really easy for them to just throw a helix on this area or to throw stickies on that area. I want to see how this next nade goes out, slash sleep, good sleep, bad nade, bad nade, bad nade. This is uh, sort of our one habits, um, be a bit calculated, that was rushed, that was rushed, you saw an opportunity to nade the doom, he was already asleep, you forced him out, you lived through that, now it's about taking space and taking aggression while he's out, but he was already forced to this point. We can walk, take the space, then nade, instead of like stacking them too closely together. And because he's already forced out. If, how do I draw this? So if he's like this, he went in, or let's say you're the pink. He went in, but then you forced him out quicker with that. Now he's here and we throw nade here he will then like be able to get his next cycle in quicker right whereas if we had thrown it here you delay that cycle and this is the time in which that your Arisa gets to take space and you get to walk and you get to be aggressive because he's already uh, screwed up his engage and this is just in general like regardless of what tank you were playing this is just matchups on into doom I think Again, your positioning a little bit out in the open, a little bit not positioned around natural cover. I'd like to see you play a bit deeper as well, just a little bit, fractionally deeper. Unlucky there. Thrown out sleep. Let's have another look at this fight. I think a lot of the issues of why you guys aren't being able to hold space very well is because your Kiriko isn't doing a great job at occupying or enabling your DPS to play in more aggressive positions. It feels like you're all clumping. And if you're clumping, a Doom has already done, done his job a lot of the time. So I think that is where a lot of these problems are stemming from in terms of why you're losing this matchup so far. I don't think it's necessarily your fault, but we always look at things that we can be doing better. Uh, especially in games that seem unwinnable because you just you get them sometimes i don't like that throwing out the sleep when you've got an echo right in front of you she sees that she knows that you don't have sleep for the next 10 seconds i'm willing to bet she's about to sneak up on you now i oh, know she's still in the middle of the fight okay i don't mind this nade you're trying to save the genji and you still got to kill on the soldier i think it's all good fight's pretty much over anyway this Echo is struggling. Nice attempt on the sleep. Nice nade. We live. And Arissa's not paying attention to her supports, so she's just going to go and feed her brains out. That's unfortunate. I think you're going to die now because you went real hard trying to save her. I think you probably just need to recognize that she just fed her brains out. And if the Kiriko can't save her, then no one will. our first death or are we going to get out here wow we did get out here did we get our Kiriko out no unlucky okay next fights 
I have copy, so that might be what we want to save our sleep for this fight. Or nade, actually, I'd want to say. Save sleep for the doom still. Uh, nade's going to deny any support and follow up on this Echo's copy. But I just want to, like, reiterate, have we seen a lot of nades slash sleeps ready just to follow on? The sleeps have been selfish, which is good. I don't expect them to be like that, but a little bit rushed. And what I wanted to, I guess I sort of glossed over it before, but what I meant with that nade that I said was rushed and sort of in the middle is it was also just, like, throw it, and I think it hit your Orisa, and I don't even think it, like, anted many of their team. Um, I could be wrong about that. I could go back and see. But um, the point being... Have some thought behind your nades. To splash them off walls is going to find a lot more value. Get creative with them. Uh, rather than just hurling them into the middle of the fight and hoping for the best. Sometimes the situation may call for that. If you need to... Um, if you need to also make sure you're hitting some of your team to increase their healing output. But I think with an Orisa a lot of the time you should be fine with not doing that. The ego from this Echo to copy you after feeding her brains out on her previous engage is astounding. That is disgusting. 10 health and she dies. Very nice. She had no right to ego duel you there on, on your hero. <laughs> what about stacking? I don't think you needed to anti the doom there. I don't think he was going to care about the fact that you did that. And a blade, this is good. Keeping our distance. I think a little bit of um, refining our wall to wall gameplay in terms of leaving one more to go to the next, just to avoid the spam damage, I think does wonders. Because if it's not forcing out your abilities, it's probably forcing this Kiriko to turn and heal you rather than doing what she wants to be doing or should be doing, whether or not she realizes what she should be doing or not. Okay, we're cart bitching for a bit here. If no one can test a soldier, probably right now we want to be leaving. I like we are using this bus for cover, but I think at this point we want to start dropping back to here. Slash, even potentially here. We have a mega to kite back to as well. I don't know, we'll see how it plays out. F9. Hmm, that all happened very quickly. She gets anteed, she gets cleansed. Why does do Kiriko not ult? Oh, she doesn't have it. She has it now. Uh, she should have. Yeah, your Kiriko should have ulted here. Slash, your Orisa should have ulted to get her fortify back when she had. The second she got anteed, she should have ulted to get her fortify off cooldown. Yeah, hey, I don't think there's much you could have done here. I think you just die quickly. Yeah. Is what it is. One of those fights. I think maybe you could have left point if we're looking at something to nitpick at. Leaving point, like I said earlier, probably makes it harder for the Doom to engage on you. You can probably do... You can probably keep the Orisa up more than having to turn your attention onto him. If I'm really looking at, like, something to change about this fight, but... I think it's just a Kiriko and Orisa misplaying that. We have a Sombra now with Hex 2, which means I think we can be a little bit more aggressive with our cooldown usage, but still calculated with it. Not just assuming that the Sombra is doing what she should be doing. That was a little overkill using Cleanse and Nade. Mm, yeah. That's a, I think that's a flow on effect. <laughs> Careful about this angle, right? Because, yes, high ground, yes, a lot of natural cover. Worse in the fact that whenever you're peeking from this angle, you're exposing yourself to all of these angles to heal your Orisa, to do your job. And generally that's a checklist for Arna to take, is that at any given moment we should be able to cut LOS from their team and not lose it of ours. 
and so maybe positioning where the Kiriko is so you have more of a defined angle and you can at least cut LOS of anyone on this side. If not, then just ditching the high ground for now. Because this is not, if the front line is here, this space, especially with a Doom Echo, is not that safe. It's a power position, but it's a good power position to rotate to in the mid fight once your Orisa has established something slash there's other pressure going out because at the moment it's a 1v1 on point and that's all that's happening and so you guys are getting all of the attention put on you They're like oh sweet the supports are up here let's go pressure them just landed a really nice sticky forced out nade and cleanse probably recognize that you get a shot on brain it keeps him above the 50 threshold he doesn't get like destroyed by the laser uh, slash knowing Kiriko will probably just self cleanse herself in that situation. And this is sort of also the problem is that being up in this power position doesn't deny this space for the enemy. And I'm watching this too because we're playing a lot in main, we're not really finding our own angle, which is making it harder to put out these creative nades or to uh exhibit pressure when we need to and to relieve it off our Arissa. I get that we don't want to position too aggressively because of the doom. Um but if the Kiriko's not gonna do it, you know, at some point you just gotta pull the trigger. Looking for shots here and just again just you know Careful about how up in you're standing, especially when you stay scoped in for long periods of time. If you're going to hard scope on one person, treat it like Widow and really limit the amount of angles you're exposing yourself to. Would have been a great opportunity for a nade. Where did we use it? Used it on the Doom, yeah. And I think you really got to dedicate sleep to Doom more than nade. Because it's too easy for him to just like, even if he is naded, then to hit a nice cooldown and to get a bunch of temporary shields. Definitely would sleep the power blocking doom here too. So a, little, a couple of missed opportunities here, maybe feeling a bit of pressure on uh, the position of Bob or the push bot, I should say. Yeah, I think cooldown usage is, is just a little bit off on this whole team fight. The calculated, and this is what I mean about when we're talking about your your comment on uh, DPS had a hard time following up on needs and sleeps. Calculated in a few things. Calculated in, uh, I'm not even going to try and write this, but calculated in the chance it's going to hit, number one. The chance that someone has to follow it up on and the chance that it doesn't decrease your overall survivability. Now, when they had a Doomfist that went in, throwing a nade on him, not the worst thing in the world, we still have sleep, doesn't decrease survivability. The chance that this sleep was going to hit, pretty low. That's why you wait for... Op uh, opportunities like when he's power blocking to sleep doom because it's really easy and then it did decrease our survivability because this echo copy immediately took space and then pressured us out until the doom was ready to go back in on us again and we didn't have nade because we used it again what did we use the second nade sleep we needed ourselves why did nade get forced out we walked up. We pressed W for no reason. So there you go. Positioning and cooldown usage, man. It seems like it's it's forcing a lot of misplays. And you seem to do really good at um, Utilizing cover to your advantage when you're under immediate threat. It just seems like a lapse in judgment or a uh, Not respecting the uh, the spam or poke damage that soldier and echo can exhibit or exert I should say like that was really good No one else was could have shot you while you were hard scoping in on that soldier it made your life really easy And as Ana we like being able to hard scope It's just a risk at, at all times the the limited movement that we have during it. That's why quick scoping is good, but uh, you don't have to worry about that if you can cut angles off from your threats. 
We're on Lucio now, so we're really probably going to have to play a Narnia. I would think. Unless the Lucio is going to position with us, but I'm willing to bet he's going to speed the Orissa around. So I think we really need to play, start playing deeper and make it hard for this Doom to engage on us. Again, I don't know what your Orissa is doing, man. She took a Sim TP. Like, I don't know what this space is giving them. <laughs> Again, they're feeding, they're playing into this Doom's hand by by grouping up. It's just making his life easier. Unlucky. That was still a better sleep, right? Because he didn't he didn't know that he had walls on him. Just that little bit of an over flick. That's fine though. It happens. I'm gonna get out. This is good. We still have a chance to win this. Now. Nano opportunities. Nano in the Orissa, so that she has increased survivability while you deal with this Doom, or while you deal with them going first. Or nanoing whoever the soldier is about to focus with Visor, slash if the Doom engages on someone else, right? Those are the two opportunities I'm looking for. Nano Orissa when she's antied. Hmm. You need a nader as well. Yeah. Where's that nade actually? Where's that nade? Why did we throw it out there? Was that on the doom again? She's a little weak. Oh, did she block it? This might have just been another rush nade and just trying to throw it into the middle of the team fight and she tanked it for us. I really like this mythic skin and the, the audio cues for it sounds sick. Same thing. Same thing, I don't need to say it. Like, there's been a lot of times in this VOD where we've been hit with a lot of stickies. And that's like a, that's a red flag, I think. You actually gonna hold on to this? Wow. Oh my goodness, they're just going to stall it out for a little bit longer. There's still a lot of time left in this spot though. Lucio gets a really nice stall in. Doom's going to wake up in a sec. Probably needed to be a bit selfish with that nade. I think at the moment your focus is on living. Um, slash... You still get a nade opportunity off by nading yourself when you wait for the team to engage on you. Like the Storm's going to go back on you again. I think you can just nade him and yourself and hope that you can do a bit more living. But for the most part, I mean, it, this this, fight's, this whole game's a, a loss. Yeah, unlucky. So yeah, I think those are my main thoughts. I think a little bit of positioning, playing a little more wall-to-wall, -wall, refining that movement through the map. A uh, great analogy is to either always play as if they have a Widow or to treat Anna like she's a hermit crab and, and the walls are her shells. You know, she's she needs them for safety. She needs to go. The only time she's leaving one is to go to the next one. Um, and then a little more calculated CD usage. You know, when you enter a match, Look at the other team, figure out what you're looking at, what you need to be saving of certain abilities for. Can you be aggressive? Can I afford, pardon me, to throw out this nade right now? Or is it going to cost me opportunities to go position aggressively? Because whenever you throw out abilities, you lose that position to go 
or you lose that opportunity to go and play in more aggressive positions because you don't have that uh, get out of jail free card or that uh, crux to lean on um, because if you have your sleep even if you're in those aggressive positions and then you miss the sleep that's a micro thing nine times out of ten we don't care about missing micro plays because we're more in, uh, concerned with the why we're doing things not if we actually pull it off because pulling it off is just a uh, a practice thing you know so those are the main things that i saw um trying to think of anything else just understanding a little bit of matchups um understanding when to kite and when to play aggressively depending on uh what you need to be doing at any given point because like we talked about in that fight you maybe could have dropped off point quicker uh push is a very fluid game mode in the fact that if you're playing it right it shouldn't be one team has the point the whole way and then the other team can test it and then you fight on point more that because it can end up in bad places right the same way cart can uh but people think like because the bot provides you with a bit of cover then it, it can make places safe it's still not like if it doesn't favor your team comp to fight on point then you don't fight on point and i know this isn't like a scrim vod or anything like that but as Ana, as supports in general we sometimes get um you know screwed over into being the cart bitch so uh if you can recognize when it's no longer safe for you to be here slash recognizing hey they have a doom he can dive on me he can close this gap really easily we were positioned around neutral cover just then um a bit better but still um yeah recognizing that you're gonna have to live this engage and by doing it on cart is probably not a great place to do it because a lot of dps will have angles to follow up on the dooms engage uh, but the main two things being that wall to wall cover a little bit of refining and a little bit of calculated nade uh, calculated ability usage um, based on the things that I said before about whether or not your team can follow up on it, how much does it decrease your survivability slash your ability to then play aggressive, and um, and the chance of it actually hitting. You know, throwing an aid into a clump of people, is that going to give us the actual uh, intended purpose behind the nade? Is throwing a sleep on a highly mobile person quite far away from us? Like... You know, even if you had a slept that soldier, I don't know if anyone could have followed up on that. And then did, it did decrease your overall survivability. Um, so yeah, those are the main things. But hopefully uh, by just refining those a little, and it is just a refining thing. Like I can see there's times when you are doing it well and you are thinking about these things, but then maybe it's just the intense moments or maybe it's when you're uh, pressured into playing in less ideal positions because your Arissa's feeding or, or something like that, then... Uh, just still remembering those things and, and trying to incorporate them into your game because at the end of the day, it's just one match. As long as we're still practicing good habits, we'll see improvement in our gameplay and it should translate into the other matches that are winnable. Uh, but yeah, let me know if there's any questions, anything you need me to explain further and all the best with your games.